Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at angle of attack and uh, kind of what it's all about as well as uh, what it means for us as pilots. Now this is one of the few times where I'm actually going to have to change this view and come to the side of the wing so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we have ourselves at F-18E here. This is a fantastic aircraft. And <laughs> I'm not going to lie, my little default pilot's a little underdressed for a plane like this, but hey, why not? So on our airplane, uh, we have ourselves this a lovely little airfoil, which is responsible for making all of our lift. And uh, as you probably know, uh, when air moves over the top of the surface and it moves under the top of the surface, if we have a little bit of bite to the air, the air that's going to be on one part of the surface is going to be moving a little bit quicker, which of course is going to create a pressure change, which is going to result in our lift. If we look at it from this side, it's actually even easier to kind of see that. Now, when we have air that's coming directly at our wing and striking and going over the top, our bite of the air, which is also known as angle of attack, is going to be relatively minimal. So if you want to imagine the air is coming right where my mouse is, this would be a zero degree angle of attack because it's just coming right at it itself. Now, as we start to get a little slower, or maybe you want to turn on a little lift, we can actually increase this angle of attack so the wing takes a bigger bite of the air. Now, if you want to imagine for a second that we start to take a greater and greater and greater bite out of this air, the amount of lift we're going to be producing will increase to a point. Um, once, of course, this uh, bite of the air that we're taking where the wing is no longer coming where the relative wind is, we run to a stall condition. Now, there's another really, really important component of this, and that's the fact that my lovely wing right here, as that air is striking that, it's going to produce drag. Now, the way that I used to always show uh, students this, of course, is, you know, we can look at a wing kind of from the front, and then we can start to tip, and you can start to see more and more of the wing. So visually, this is exactly what's happening as your angle of attack is increasing. You'll see less angle of attack. Keep in mind, we've got slats and flaps interfering with my view here, but that's okay. But as we increase that angle of attack, and again, that's not angle to the horizon, that's the angle to the incoming air, we're taking a bigger chunk out of the air, producing a lot more energy changes, which is going to actually slow the plane down because of induced drag. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to play around with angle of attack a little bit. Now, the reason I chose my F-18 here is because it has a handy-dandy angle of attack indicator. And that's actually indicated right here. Uh, you can see we're actually tipped downwards, which means the plane is actually being pushed down onto the runway right now. Now, as I start to lift the nose, watch how my angle of attack increases. Slam up the landing gear. Go ahead and slam up the flaps. And you can see very, very clearly how my angle of attack slowly increases, and it actually will decrease. Let me go ahead and zoom back out here. So everything gets all crunched back inside. Let's go ahead and pull ourselves out of burner here. We don't need to do any of that. So I'm going to go ahead and push the nose of the plane down here, and we're going to level. Now, one of the most important concepts with angle of attack, and I can't say this enough, is the fact that the angle of attack is not your pitch. As a matter of fact, um, I'm holding myself more or less level to the horizon, and you can see I still have an angle of attack about one or two degrees here. Uh, that's just on account of the fact that, remember, lift is a combination of your air density, it's going to be the shape of the airfoil, which is your coefficient of lift, and it's going to be angle of attack and the square of your speed. As a matter of fact, if I were to go ahead and increase my speed significantly here, I'm going to hold the nose down, you'll observe that as I accelerate, the speed of the air moving over the wing increases, and my angle of attack actually reduces because I need less of a bite of the air to achieve the same amount of lift. Now, if I really wanted to kick this up a notch, and actually I kick on my burner seal, so I get this thing moving pretty quick here, you'll notice my angle of attack has dropped to, um, it's, it's about a half a degree right now. And I, that gives you an idea of how little of a tiny, tiny, tiny little bite I'm taking out of the air. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring our throttle, we'll come out of burner here and kind of settle in. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore angle of attack a little bit. Now, if I want to make this aircraft go up, I need to use some of that lovely lift that I've been accumulating here. Now, of course, I have a ton of speed right now. So if I were to go ahead and pull back on the stick, you can see I'm taking a little bite out of the air there. I'm only about one degree. But because my airspeed is so fantastic right now, you can see that I'm getting a climb rate in the almost 30,000 feet per minute range. And my angle of attack has not actually increased very much. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the throttle and I'm going to pull it back. Now watch what happens. My airspeed is um, starting to bleed off, and you'll notice my angle of attack is maintaining more or less constant here. Even though my nose is up, notice by the way my flaps pop down themselves, and notice the plane itself is um, still climbing pretty well. Um, we're basically taking advantage of momentum here. I'm doing about 150 knots, I'm doing about 136, and if you watch, my flight path vector, that's a little uh, circle with wings, just dropped off, and then my angle of attack is now spiking to a staggering 40 degrees. And then, of course, the uh, plane can no longer support its nose, and it immediately drops. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually pulling back as hard as I can on the stick. And you'll notice, even though my plane is pointing downwards, I am dropping as if this plane is going down. As a matter of fact, we're having angle of attack problems. We're getting weird buffeting here. And I'm pulling back, and I'm pulling back, and I'm, let me go ahead and add some power. I'm going to go ahead and add full throttle, and my plane is still dropping like a cannon here. 
I'm still going down. I'm still going down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let go of my stick. And we're back in control. You're sitting there going, what? Everything from the front of the vehicle suggested that oh, we were at a correct angle. We should have been accelerating. We should have been fine. But why were we still descending? Why were we still losing altitude? Why were we not getting any speed despite the fact I was at full throttle? That's because the bite of the air that I was taking was so big, I was stalling the wing. And all that drag I created, I could not overcome, even though the plane was pointing downwards, number one, and I was adding all of that energy with that engine itself. So again, we'll go ahead and explore that a little bit more here. So let me go ahead and reduce power again. And I love the F-18 because it's a, one of the few aircraft that really, 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 really lets you still kind of do stupid things like this. If we had an old like F-4 Phantom or something like that, you better believe I do the same kind of thing here. So I'm going to increase my angle of attack to, uh, we'll get it to about 10 degrees here. It looks pretty good. So right now we're doing about 127. Now one thing, like I said, the F-18 does really well here is it knows to put its own flaps down. Now one of the things we could do on the normal one is we could actually override that behavior. So I'm just sitting here at about a 10 degree angle of attack. And you can see just how much of a bite of air my wing is actually taking. This is about 10 degrees. Now the interesting thing here is you'll notice my actual nose position does not correspond with the position of the horizon. And it also does not correspond with the actual altitude or gain or lack of altitude that I have. You can see my little flight path vector right here is I just sort of chilling just barely over the horizon and I'm pitched up at about 10 degrees. It's actually about 15 degrees right now. And an F-18, by the way, straight is this little circle here if you ever want to kind of think about it. So we're just kind of chilling here and uh, you can see that I've um, got pretty high amount of engine power being developed right here, doing about 117 knots and I'm just sort of hovering here at this particular speed. I'm not really gaining altitude. I'm getting about 400 feet per minute here, but you can also see it's not really getting any worse of a situation. My flaps are basically doing all the work here. And again, this is one of those amazing things about fly-by-wire systems is you can do stuff like this. Now, if I increase the angle of attack slightly, let's go ahead and pull the nose up just a little bit here. You'll notice that I have a corresponding increase in angle of attack. And you'll notice a corresponding decrease in speed. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna get there. Now you'll notice as I start getting up to about, oh my gosh, 20 degrees angle of attack, the drag is starting to overwhelm any thrust. And I'm actually slowly, oh, there it is. And there is our, th our little stall. And then of course the computer kicks in and tries to save us. Now to recover from this, of course, I can stop full power, full afterburner. Again, I'm not even touching the stick if you actually look. And you can see we're trapped. Uh, this whole aircraft is falling like a pancake right now, no matter how much power. So I need to actually break the angle of attack just like that. And now my aircraft is completely recovered that easily. Now I know you're sitting here going, Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this. Uh, this. This is making a little bit more sense. Um, but what does that mean for us over in civilian airplane land? It actually means a lot for us. So uh, one of the things is that this military aircraft is still controllable out to 30 degrees. A Cessna 172 is no longer controllable past 11 or 12 degrees. So it just gives you an idea. Another thing to note too is um, when I take corners, and uh, this is relevant for fighters, is relevant for little propeller jockeys, you'll notice that even though my speed didn't change, my angle of attack is now increasing. As a matter of fact, if I want to increase the angle I want to use, you'll notice my angle of attack is incredibly increasing, which is now, of course, decreasing our speed, which, of course, is increasing the angle of attack and is starting to drift us closer and closer to a bad situation. So one of the interesting things is, is even though you're not a military fighter jet, a Cessna 152, for example, you still have the same considerations. But you know what you don't have on a Cessna 152? You don't have that on a Cessna 152. That's one of the reasons that military aircraft are capable of doing really, really ridiculously fast, um, basically sustained turns because of all that energy. Now, one of the interesting things they teach you in a fighter jet school is the fact that if you do want to do a very aggressive sustained turn, you can't do them from a low speed. If you attempted it, the, um, you quickly exceed that angle of attack, start to increase the drag, and no amount of afterburn is going to save you. So if we would actually go ahead and pull this thing into a nice turn here, and pull that back pretty aggressively. You'll notice because I'm doing about 500 knots, I can pull the stick to my chest and I'm having no decrease, a little decrease in speed, not a lot. You could actually balance it. But right now we're pulling, um, that's about six Gs. This is a six G sustained turn, six Gs. And now notice my angle of attack there, over about four or five degrees. Now, if I were to pull back all the way, you'll notice my speed starts bleeding out. So even though I almost pulled seven Gs there, I'm starting to lose speed. My angle of attack is increasing. And even though I'm sustaining this, it's not going to last very long. Also, if you want to watch something amazing, you can watch at the top of that wing. <laughs> and again, it's a very, very, very fascinating concept. 
So hopefully uh, this helps you out as understanding that and visualizing that kind of a piece. Uh, one of the things you'll notice about angle of attack too is when we go to land, that angle of attack has to be maintained at a certain level in order to make sure we don't overwhelm ourselves and end up in that dreaded region of reversal. Enjoy.